uh, right now, what do we have about 15 active banjo players? Twenty now. Maybe twenty. All our members are volunteers. They get no compensation except the joy of playing the banjo. And performing for people, there's a lot of guys that are would never have a chance to play in front of a crowd that are members. So right now I am outside the Elks Lodge. I'm shooting this short documentary here on the Bando Club. Uh, this is actually the first time I've been here at Bando Night, and I'm really surprised by how enthusiastic people are. Actually, real quick, can you tell me like what brings you into Bando Club? Like, what, what's the appeal? Tell us about Bando Club. I love banjos. 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 Yeah. Old time music's classic great. Pittsburgh experience. I think the very special part about Banjo Night is it's for everyone. That it doesn't matter what your salary is, where you live, how old you are. There's no, no way to describe it other than it's an open door for everyone to be a part of. It's a great mix of young and old people, so you get all walks of life in here, a great blend of people. And the young people come in. You'd be amazed. The place is filled with young people from the college and universities around here, and they love it. And they're all wonderful kids, and they, they're respectful. Well, what brings you out to Bando Club? Uh, well, this is my house. I've heard about it, uh, and we just want to enjoy the music. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd heard about it from a bunch of different people. My daughter, Miss Kelly, over there. This is a Christmas gift to her to come here for the evening. Um, I come to Banjo Club because I love banjo music. Uh, the energy is really awesome here and it's a really good environment to be in uh, and it's a really fun time. And she actually brought me. This is my first night and I love it so far. It's awesome. It's everything that I grew up on and I wasn't expecting it so it has a really cool vibe. We and actually went to high school together yeah. which was really cool and then uh, Hannah's a hairdresser which is super awesome and I got a Robert Morris University. Does she do your hair? It looks yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. club because I've been around the Elks for many many years uh, actually my one girlfriend's dad was the Grand Pooba as we called him the exalted ruler he even had my wedding shower in the Elks well, I, I heard about it uh, years ago and I heard about it from just the older people and then I started hearing from hipsters that were hanging out there that it was the coolest scene in the city and I had to go check it out for myself to see what the deal was because whenever you're offering cheap beer, it's always the coolest thing in the city. That's the secret out there in the video land, it's the cheap beer. <laughs> People come to Banjo Night for cheap drinks, great atmosphere. Okay, so what brings you guys to the Banjo Club? Cheap beer. It's Rob, you can come here. He won't mind moving over here. How are you doing, my friend? All right, Coach. You guys, you guys have a good uh, holiday? Yeah, how about you? Good, great. 
How did you know I was saving your seat? Well, I appreciate it. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> you see that? That's the way a beer should be. You see that? Okay. That's great beer with that foam on there. It's not all banjos. Uh, I play a six string banjo, which isn't a banjo at all, it's a guitar. It just looks and sounds like a banjo. Free Brassie. He retired from uh, being an air traffic controller in uh, Long Island. He joined the Long Island Banjo Club and when he retired, came back to Pittsburgh and put out an ad saying, hey, I, I want to start a, a banjo club here in Pittsburgh. Are there any banjo players who want to join? He was a showman. I mean, he could get up in front of any audience and just have them eaten out of his hand. A friend of mine brought me down and I sat in front of Frank Rossi. And I picked up the instrument, which I never saw before and I played The World is Waiting for the Sunrise uh, on the guitar, all chords. And as soon as he heard me, he said, get up on that stage. Dues are five dollars a year, and when you get to be 90, you don't have to pay anything. So I thought that was great. I thought I'd save a few bucks here and there. Carol, this young man is doing a documentary. Uh -oh. I told him it wouldn't be a documentary without you. Oh, uh, it would be fine without me, I think. <laughs> I'm the least interesting person in this band, I hate to tell you. Banjo Club, I'm a relatively new member of the Banjo Club. I've been a member for about uh, six years, and so I'm still uh, learning to play the banjo. I play a lead part. Uh, I just sort of stumbled upon it type thing. Yeah, that's actually how it happened. Uh, I knew a guy, and he was wearing a hat that said Pittsburgh Banjo Club, as a matter of fact. I said, what the heck is that? Because I'd never heard of it. That was 21 years ago, actually. So. I have had the mayor of Niagara Falls, the mayor of New York City, Kimball Musk, the brother of Elon Musk. I've taken them all to Banjo Night, and it, it's never disappointed. All right, guys, so this is actually Kelly. She's been my main point of contact for this documentary. I do the Facebook page. So, Kelly, can you tell us a bit, little bit about like the Banjo Club? How did you get involved? And then tell us a little bit about like its history. Okay, sure. Well, I, you know, it's sort of a long story. I don't know how much. <laughs> uh, my husband started playing. We just came as spectators. We came to see people had told us how fun it is here. So we, but we had little kids at the time, two and three. Tell us about like what got you started playing the banjo and what brought you to banjo night. My dad. When he started coming, we started coming. I started teaching them, but I don't know what I'm doing, so we got a professional, more amazing, who leads the band um, to take over there as their teacher, and he's been their teacher ever since. They're wonderful. <laughs> They're good banjo players. They've, they've been dragged to the club ever since mom and dad came down here on Wednesdays. Daddy was a banjo player, so the boys were three and four when they started coming here. And they were three and four when they started to sing with the band. And they sang up until they weren't cute anymore. And at that period, there was a crossover period where we, they sang and played the banjo a little bit. And then finally their voices gave up and they became banjo players. They're very, very good banjo players. Um, probably the best players in the <laughs> some of the best players in the band, those two young ones. I'd inherited the banjo from my dad and Norm Azinger, who's the music director. I met, happened to meet him. Uh, he learned that I had a banjo and he actually repaired it, gave me some lessons, and I started playing at the banjo club. Norm, Norm Azinger is fantastic. Check, check, check. We're all great. We all volunteered to do one, The one good thing about Norm check, is check. that he can teach, and so some. some uh, Someday he's going to hang it up and we're going to have to have some people that can carry on. Some and students even listen. <laughs> Not too many. The Banjo Club is, is wonderful. If you have not heard banjos, uh, I think it's time to go to the Elks because you're really missing out on a lot. You have to experience it. What can I tell you?